What's up, YouTube? It's Aerith, your favorite dragon. And I'm here today to bring you a video that I'm super, super thrilled about filming. And that is a video that is just on Evoker in general. Um, this is my ultimate Evoker guide. Um, I've been working really, really hard on this. Um, a lot of folks have been putting their guides out kind of earlier. Um, so I know there's a lot of information that is already out there. I wanted to make sure that I waited until I have had a very, very strong grasp of the class until I understood, um, I guess everything that I possibly could. I wanted to be able to bring you the best guide I possibly could. And in doing so, um, that meant getting a lot of grinding out of the way. Uh, also, thank you to everyone who brought it to my attention that I say I'm um, a lot in my YouTube videos. It's true. We're going to try and break that habit today, but it is very hard. I'm actually thinking really, really hard about saying the word. Um, it's hard to avoid it. Anyway, without further ado, um, we're going to jump straight into it. There it is right there. It's inescapable. Um, it is what it is. So first things first, um, let's talk about some talents. Now, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. There's a lot of different builds out there. And I think that a lot of them are very good. Uh, the standard build, as far as I see it, of course, would not play overall, but would instead play either two points in Inherent Resistance or two points in Draconic Legacy, depending on the dungeon. You can also swap around whether or not you play Twin Guardian or Fire Within. Um, these two are fairly interchangeable in my opinion, or you can drop both of them in order to pick up some extra utility. You can get an extra wing buffet, an extra knockup if that's what your group needs. Um, you could get more magic resistance. Uh, you have a lot of choices here. So the times when I'll play Twin Guardian are when you expect that someone in your group might get one shot. Um, so some examples of this are for instance, in Naka, the Tyr and Maruk boss, and some of the really, really high ones, you will have party members, um, for instance, a shaman, who is just going to die because they don't have a defensive and there's nothing they can do. Um, so there's like a little trick that I picked up where you can play Twin Guardian and you can quickly grip them right before the damage happens and give yourselves both an Absorb Shield. Um, the Absorb Shield is very, very, very useful for any of these massive damage events. Also for the Mana Bombs um, in Eldgar Academy, very, very strong there. It's strong in a lot of places. I definitely would recommend playing around with it. Again, this is something I would only do in much, much higher keys. Uh, Fire Within is a great talent as well, and I would definitely not go without it in Knock It Offensive. In Knock It Offensive, I actually find a way to play both of these, and there's multiple ways you can do this. You can do it like this. Uh, you can lose a little bit of damage, um, but uh, this is very good because it lines up with every single tornado phase. So um, every single one of the tornadoes, electrical storm phases, you'll have it. Um, these are fairly interchangeable. Um, uh, with that said, though, let's talk about this other side. Um, so the other side, there's a couple different things you can do. I actually have a full guide on talents um, where I go very, very in-depth, and that is also on my YouTube, so definitely be sure to check that out. I talk mostly about two very specific builds, um, one of which looks something like this, another which looks something like this. And I think these two builds are still very, very, very strong. Um, I won't get too, too deep in depth about them, um, other than to say that the strength of this build is that you're echoing lots of reversions, uh, you have a lot more single target healing, um, and you're able to have tons and tons of essence thanks to Empath. Um, and then the strength of this build is that you just have a lot of um, powerful throughput uh, that you can get in bursts. Now, Dream Breath, of course, is not always gonna be 100% uptime. So if you are playing with this build, you do have to be very, very discerning about when you have the Dream Breath hot rolling on people and when you do not. Um, at the end of the day, I do not really recommend this build anymore. I think the strongest build looks something like this. Um, and you can either take Spiritual Clarity if it lines up with a major mechanic, or you can take Empath um, if you feel like the Essence Regeneration is going to be better. Again, I go very, very in-depth about where I would play each of these two talents in that talent video. Definitely take a look at it. Um, there's one other build I wanted to talk about. And that is one that I have actually been working on. I get people coming to the stream every day almost. Uh, and I, like, no kidding, just about every single day asking me about Temporal Anomaly. Is Temporal Anomaly good? Uh, can we make it work? And the answer is actually yes, you can. Uh, if you're going to play Temporal Anomaly, I would probably play this build. You do lose damage, um, but you get a lot of safety. Uh, this is a giga giga safe build where you can basically send out a Temporal Anomaly. You can put a reversion on the whole party. This activates Grace Period. You, have an, you can do another one. You can put a Dream Breath on the full party. 
Um, you'll have two dream breaths, two reversions. Uh, it's it's definitely very, very, very potent for incredibly stacked healing. Um, there are definitely some major downsides to temporal anomaly, though. If you have multiple casters in your party, temporal anomaly becomes somewhat uh, finicky. They're not necessarily going to stack, even when you tell them to. If you're if you're in comms and if you're not in comms, you can absolutely count on that hunter to be in the middle of nowhere and getting absolutely no value from temporal anomaly. And if that is the case, then uh, these are effectively dead talents and your build could just be stronger doing something different. Um, but there are definitely places where I think these are very, very strong talents. Um, a good example of this might be Halls of Valor for the Wolf Boss, um, Fenrir, and for Herja. And Herja and the Electrical Storm, um, it's it's very easy to quickly, before the storm starts, get out a Temporal Anomaly, put a, regress, put a reversion on the whole party, and send out another one to get the Dream Breath on the whole party. Um, you can become a lot constrained based on your haste with this build, though. I think that this build might want more haste for your particular encounters. I have not played around with it a ton, uh, but there are people who love Temporal Anomaly, and if you are a Temporal Anomaly enjoyer, this is what I would theorize as being a probably the best temporal anomaly build if you're just looking for very powerful healing throughput. Uh, this is what I would look at. Uh, again, the overall, this is a nod to Raging Week. It is raging at the time of filming this video. Um, and these two points, of course, can go in other places, be that Twin Guardian, be that extra stamina, more magic resistance for Ruby, um, just depending on, on what exactly you need and what exactly you want. Um, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the basics as far as um, talents go, again, check out that talents video. Um, I go really, really in depth about talent choices and I will probably be releasing more and more videos. Um, probably we'll do a video on specifically this build where I go more in depth with it and have some gameplay footage. I do not have any TA gameplay footage for you today um, because I do feel, find that it is a weaker choice and most of the keys that I've been doing have been very, very high. So I've been looking to min max everything that I possibly can. Um, so yeah, with that aside, uh, let's talk a little bit about consumables. Um, again, I do have a full consumables guide available on my YouTube, um, and you can feel free to check that out. Everything that is in that video still holds true. Uh, of course, we will want to eat either a feast um, or we can go for haste first food called the aromatic seafood platter. You can also go for haste crit food, which is probably better unless you're in a very, very high key where you're afraid you might die. And that's called feisty fish sticks. Um, for a flask, uh, we're looking at either great glacial fury or tepid versatility. I don't really mess with any of the other flasks. Uh, the versatility is very, very good. You can always put it on. It's very reliable. It gives you healing, it gives you damage, and it gives you, most importantly, DR. Um, I think that that is probably the best flask that you could be using if you're ever in doubt. Um, but if you're just doing a farm key and you're not scared at all for anyone, you just want to do more damage, uh, you could go ahead and throw on a Glacial Fury and you will do just fine um, damage-wise. Uh, as far as potions go, I only use two. I use the Elemental Potion of Power, and I use the Potion of Shocking Disclosure. Um, now these two are interchangeable, um, but I do tend to use the Shocking Disclosure on trash packs. And if there's something the boss that I'm particularly scared of, uh, for instance, like a major damage phase on Herja, where I'm not sure exactly how easily I'll get through it, I might just go ahead and throw back an Elemental Potion of Power and just get the extra um, healing throughput. Then after that phase is over, it's still lingering um, and I'm able to get even more value out of it when I'm just doing damage or when I'm topping up everybody up kind of passively as they take the arcing bolts and that sort of thing. Um, so that's really all I wanted to get into as far as consumables go, just being that there is a full in-depth consumables guide for those of you who are looking for a deeper dive onto what to get. Uh, in that guide, I also talk about things like gems. I talk about things like what to put on your uh, rings and so forth. Um, so definitely give, give that a shot. Um, uh, yeah, so that, that's that's pretty much it for um, consumables. Um, let's talk a little bit about our abilities. Um, so this class is very, very different from most other classes uh, and most other healers in that we do not have a spammable healing spell. If you're coming from a class like Holy Priest, uh, you might be tempted to press the Living Flame button a lot to, for healing, uh, but this is actually not where you want to be. Uh, that is not what this class looks to do. This class does not just sit back and, and press a filler spell. Um, if you're looking for a filler spell, uh, I think what you're actually looking for is reversion. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, but first and foremost, uh, let's just go through the abilities one by one, kind of talk about what they do. Um, we have Fire Breath. This is a damage ability. Um, it will go, it can be empowered up to four. It always deals the same damage. 
But the more you empower it for, the more damage is up front and the less damage occurs as a dot. The less you empower it for, the more damage is a dot and the less is up front. Um, Azure Strike is our AOE feel it filler, provided we are specced into protracted talents, which I would definitely recommend that you do. Um, I have a full DPS guide where I go into the reasons why. You can also take a look at that one if you're looking to get a more in-depth look into our DPS rotation. Um, it's a great, it's a great guide. I go really in depth about four set and why I think protracted talons is a must if you're playing four set. Um, it's just, it's just a great ability. Um, once you get your four set in particular, um, we have Fury of the Aspects. This is of course our lust button and it makes everyone look really, really pretty. They will be very grateful that they're not glowing red, but are instead glowing with rainbows. Really cool. Uh, we have Cauterizing Flame. Uh, this allows us to remove any bleed, poison, curse, or disease effects. Um, and it also notably he has a pretty big uh, heal that happens as soon as you press that button. Um, and the heal is actually uh, pretty potent, but of course it has to remove something for you to actually get the heal. Uh, we have Deep Breath. Uh, this is another DPS ability. We have Landslide. Uh, which allows us to root our enemies. Um, we have Disintegrate. Disintegrate is, of course, a, another DPS ability, though we do not press Disintegrate um, almost ever. Uh, the only time I would actually encourage you to press Disintegrate is if, for whatever reason, you have to line of sight something, um, think the Fellow Dominators in Court of Stars, or the giant, uh, whirly, the giant uh, elemental, thunder, elemental Storm Guy in Alfgar Academy. In the case of these, there are moments when they're going to do an ability that's going to hurt you very bad. You can quickly hover, press disintegrate, and go around the corner, and the disintegrate will continue casting from line of sight, and then you can go back around and continue your normal rotation. Um, that said, uh, the use cases for disintegrate are pretty narrow, and you generally don't want to be spending your essence because your essence is a very, very precious, precious resource in keys. Uh, next, we have Living Flame. This is, of course, our quote unquote filler, although I do not recommend you use this spell as a filler, as I just mentioned. Uh, Living Flame is a bit of a last resort spell. You're, if you're pressing this button to heal, it is because you are down very, very, very bad, and you have expended just about every single resource that you possibly can. Um, you definitely do not want to be healing with Living Flame, unless, except for in particular niche situations, um, which we will also cover here shortly. Um, let's see, Obsidian Scales. Uh, this is our defensive. I recommend that you take the uh, second charge of Obsidian Scales in the talent tree. And this will give you basically just a DR. It's 30%. It is a 90 second recharge and you have two charges. Uh, it's pretty potent. Um, be very discerning about when you use it. Um, we'll talk a little bit about defensive usage here shortly. Uh, next we have Emerald Blossom. I recommend that you almost never press this ability in Mythic Plus. Um, I can say that pretty confidently now. A lot of people were proponents of this. Um, kind of coming into this uh, season. I don't think it's very good personally. Um, there are builds that can make use of it. It doesn't synergize with our two set. It doesn't synergize with our four set. It um just generally like does less. It's a less impactful button to press than a lot of the alternatives, uh, namely Echo. Uh, next we have a pressing roar. A pressing roar is something you spec into. When you cast a pressing roar, it makes it so that any CC that the target is hit by you can see we put the oppressing or debuff on this guy. Any CC that we do is going to be uh, much longer. Let's see exactly how much longer is it. Increasing the duration of crowd control affects the effect them by 50% for the next 10 seconds. Um, so yeah, you can pair this with, if you have a monk, for instance, you could go oppressing roar on a pack and the monk can sweep and you'll have a much, much longer stun. Um, I actually have not really, even in high levels of gameplay, uh, been doing this a lot. I mostly just take oppressive roar for um, for the AoE Soothe, which is why I'm presently specced into it. Uh, next we have Quell. This is, of course, our Interrupt. Our Interrupt is on a 40 second cooldown. It's a very, very long. Uh, so make sure you're discerning with it. You don't just want to randomly kick. Uh, you want to make sure that something is definitely going to go off before you kick, um, or else call a kick. And uh, you can also be tracking other people's kicks. As you see, can see I have a kick tracker right here. And whenever it looks as though we are not going to have a kick for something. I might just go ahead and throw it out there or um, else I might also be in the kick rotation just depending on what is going on. Uh, next we have Renewing Blaze. Renewing Blaze is a, by default, 90 seconds um, cooldown, but you can make it one minute uh, if you spec into it. Uh, this is actually an incredibly powerful ability. If you are taking uh, lots of damage, um, it is going to heal you back for everything that you take um, over eight seconds. Uh, so effectively, if you slam this ability in the middle of a damage event, 
whatever damage you take during that damage event, you're just going to get healed back. Um, so it's very, very powerful. Uh, there are times when I will sync it up with Obsidian Scales, and there are times when I will just press this button because I know that it will carry by itself. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the defensive usage uh, here shortly. Uh, next, we have Return. Uh, this is our single target resurrection. Make sure you have a key binding for return as well as your mass, res mass return. Um, this is just because if your team is in combat but you are not uh, and someone is dead, you're able to press return on them and bring them back to life, um, as with all other healers. Uh, and, but if you are if you are um, not in combat, your team is, someone is dead, and you try to mass res, you cannot mass res. That is a thing. Uh, next, we have tip the scales. This makes it to our next empower ability happens immediately. This is basically just presence of mind if you've ever played a mage. Um, very, very powerful um, ability that I use more or less off cooldown. Uh, I, I use this thing like it's like candy. If I'm not going to use it for healing anytime soon, you can also tip the scales into a fire breath and just deal a lot of instant damage um, just to get more burst damage off more er, quickly. Uh, next we have Verdant Embrace. This is our single target emergency heal spell. Uh, it is important to note that when you press this ability, Everyone's got PvP to say, okay, well, everyone's in PvP mode. There we go. When you press this ability, you will effectively do the Druid Wild Charge um, at that person. Um, so keep that in mind when, you are, when you're pressing this. Uh, it's really easy to die. I've actually died more times this expansion pressing Verdant Embrace than I have to actual mechanics in the game. That was a true story. I'm not making that up. It is very dangerous. Um, and most of the time, you don't actually want to directly heal someone with Verdant Embrace. Um, you want to do something, uh, something a little bit more interesting, uh, which we will talk about here shortly. Um, so let's get into the preservation tree. Uh, we have Dream Breath. Dream Breath is a nuke spell that we can empower. So we can empower Dream Breath all the way and it will do a lot of healing up front, similar to Fire Breath, and leave a little hot on the people. Or we can empower it on one and it will just leave a big heal over time effect. It lasts for 16 seconds. Um, it's very situational whether you want to charge this up all the way or just let it go on one. Most of the time, I just let it go on one uh, so that I can be along with my business. The heal over time effect is actually quite powerful. Um, so, but yeah, if your if your team is ever like dipping low, and you're in the middle of casting a dream breath, uh, sometimes I'll just go ahead and tip it up to two to three, or sometimes even all the way, just to make them a, a little bit more safe. Uh, next, we have rewind. Uh, rewind is our massive um, raid wide cooldown. Uh, this is a huge, huge ability. You can use it every four minutes by default, three minutes if you take the talent. I do recommend that you take the talent that makes it a three minute cooldown. And basically what this ability does is it reverses all damage that your party members took in the in the context of Mythic Plus, it's 100% um, in the last five seconds. Uh, so for Rewind to be effective, your team needs to have already taken the damage. Um, so in, in a damage events like, for instance, like Herja Storm, you can't just press it at the beginning. You have to wait till you're like halfway through the storm and you can press the ability and it will just do a ton, a ton, a ton of healing. And uh, it comes across as a heal over time effect. Um, so for, for like the next little bit, your team is basically very, very, very safe. Um, Spirit Bloom is another rotational ability. Uh, Spirit Bloom is a, an ability that we can charge up. It has multiple stages. And the more times we charge it up, the more people it will hit. It's uh, really just that simple. Um, so if we put it on four, it heals a fourth ally, ally beside your target. On one, it heals just one ally. Two, it heals a random target plus, or a random injured target, which is a smart heal, uh, plus your target. Um, three, it heals two people plus your target, um, and, and so on and so forth. I'm sorry, two, you, you, you get good what I'm saying. Um, this is a nuke heal. This is your most powerful heal, and you should always be playing around this ability. Uh, improper Spirit Bloom use can put you in a bad, a bad spot. If you use a Spirit Bloom too soon, uh, you might just you might just lose somebody because you didn't do it at the right time. It is a long cooldown uh, in 20 seconds as far as rotational abilities go, but it is very powerful. So it is something you need to be very discerning about. Um, next we have Echo. Echo is a very, very interesting spell. In my opinion, the most interesting spell that they have ever included in the game. Um, so the way that Echo works is we put an Echo on someone, and if we cast any spell, put an Echo... If we cast any spell, it will become replicated on that target. So let's say that I were to echo myself, and I press reversion. The spell is replicated, so now I have two reversions. Uh, this works for literally any spell. Um, 
So for instance, if we can find someone who nope. literally everyone's PvP, aren't they? What are you guys doing? Why are you in PvP? I don't understand. You can't find anybody these days. Unbelievable. Um, it's regardless, so it does not matter who the echo is on. If you echo anyone, um, and you cast any spell, that ability will be replicated onto them. Let's say I echo myself and I live in flame myself. I'm going to have two iterations of a living flame healing in my log, which is of course being spammed by lots and lots of nonsense. Let's go somewhere nice and quiet. Where we can uh, show this more easily. So if we echo ourselves, and then we living flame ourselves, we will have two instances of living flame healing. The same goes for any other spell that you have. You can echo yourself and then spirit bloom yourself, and you'll have two iterations of spirit bloom healing. The first and then the echo. This one crit, crit for quite a lot. As you can see, 184,000, very, very significant heal. Um, and yeah, uh, that, that is a, this is a core tenant of the class. Um, what you'll find is a lot of uh, gameplay in, that Evoker has involves playing around Echo uh, properly. Um, and we, for that reason, we pretty much always use our essence in order to uh, Echo people um, because we're able to do lots of really interesting and powerful things. Oh, there's actually no one who... There we go. We found somebody who's not in PvP. Um, so this is pretty interesting. So we will Living Flame this person. There's the first and there's the Echoed one. If we were to echo this person and then burn and embrace them, they will actually take two burn and embrace heals, as you can see. Uh, if we were to echo ourselves or anyone else and press Dream Breath, there will be two iterations of Dream Breath healing. Both of these are uh, powerful. Um, same goes for anything. So as you can see, um, you're able to using Echo. Do lots of powerful things. Here we just put two dream breaths and two reversions on ourselves. Uh, we can echo and get two living flame heals. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Um, and so yeah, that is that's kind of the basics of echo. Um, hopefully, uh, as you continue to watch the video, as we get a little bit deeper into this discussion, um, if you have any like things that are like maybe not quite making sense with echo, um, they will you will start to understand better and better. Um, let's actually swap back over to our normal talent build. And there we go. Uh, so getting back into it, we have a couple more spells to get through here. We have tip the scales. Uh, I'm sorry, we have stasis. Um, stasis is a, I have a whole section where I'm going to talk about stasis, uh, but basically what it does is when you press stasis, you are able to store three helpful spells. And when you release stasis, um, those three spells happen. If you've ever played a Rest of Druid before, you can think of this as a Convoke the Spirits, but it is a DIY Convoke the Spirits where you get to choose the three spells that are in it. Um, and so you pop it, you choose the three spells you want, and then you release it, and it just recasts those spells. Very, 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 very powerful uh, ability. Has an incredibly high skill ceiling. Uh, you'll do all kinds of different things with Stasis, um, uh, depending on the context. Uh, but for the most part, we have a couple of things that we tend to do. Um, I will get into Stasis specifically when we talk about combos. Uh, next, we have Time Dilation. Time Dilation is, of course, a stagger ability. When we press Time Dilation, what it says is 50% of damage is being delayed and dealt to you over time. Um, so this is our basically our something that we'll be giving to the tank more often than not. It's on a one-minute cooldown, so you want to make sure that you press it every minute if you can. Uh, find some sort of use for it. It's incredibly powerful, and um, you will almost always be grateful that you've pressed it. Uh, if you're in doubt, uh, just press the button. Um, most of the time, as I said, it's going to be going on your tank, uh, but you'll also be using it to save your party members' lives at times. If you can see in your party frames that someone is about to be targeted by a bolt and they're at 50% health, uh, you might just go ahead and time dilation them if you are not able to top them in that second, and it gives you a moment to kind of catch back up. Um, this is, again, a very, very, very powerful spell with an incredibly high skill ceiling. Uh, just make sure that you're using it more or less off cooldown and you're not afraid to use it. Never, never have the mentality of like, oh, but what if I need it like next pack? You can use it again next pack. You just you just always use it. If you're ever in doubt, just press it. Just press it. Uh, you could also use this as a personal if something like really, really devastating is about to happen to you. You could use it as a personal before a major damage event. Um, like, for 
for instance, a Herja Storm or something to that effect. If you have lots of bleeds on Fenrir, um, you know, the, 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 the use cases uh, never end. There are very many of them. Uh, next, we have our Dispel. Uh, this remove, we can remove poison, we can remove magic, and this is just naturalized. And then, of course, we have Reversion. Um, reversion is our filler, and it is uh, our most important and impactful spell uh, that we have with the build that I am currently recommending. Uh, reversion is incredibly powerful, um, and it is effectively a heal over time effect. Um, so it's think of it like a life bloom um, or a uh, riptide almost uh, sort of effect. Uh, it doesn't have the upfront healing of riptide, um, but it but it is a it is a just a potent heal over time. Um, and if you're playing grace period, uh, it also increases your healing by 10% on that target from all sources. If you echo a reversion, uh, you are increasing your healing to that target by 20%. And each reversion is also boosting the other reversion. So this reversion is hitting for 20% more. This reversion is also hitting for 20% more. Uh, part of what makes this ability so powerful is our tier set. Um, when we are, when we have a reversion out, um, and we cast an empower spell, the likelihood that that reversion critically hits is increased by 25% for six seconds. Um, this is really good for um, for just raw healing throughput, but also whenever our reversion critically hits on any given tick, it extends its duration by a second. Um, so that is, that is something that is important to note. Our reversions become longer the more they crit, and our tier makes it so that they are more likely to crit if we cast an empower spell. So as you can see, every time they crit, you'll see this little spinny wheel kind of tick backwards, um, indicating that the, it has gained a second. Um, uh, the next thing to talk about in terms of reversion is our uh, is our four set. When we get four set, we have a chance to get an instant cast living flame. The, the proc will look just like this, what you can see about my character right now. Um, and that living flame will be instant cast and been boosted by 20%. It will do 20% increased damage or 20% increased healing. I talk a lot about how you can play around this uh, particular effect in my DPS video, where I talk about exactly how to get the most out of your damage. Um, and really the only thing to add to that uh, after having watched that video is that you can also use this for healing. I very, very often in times of high stress, will have a lot of echo reversions out, which means I'm getting a lot of four set procs and it's a lot of single target nuke heals. Um, by itself, Living Flame is not very powerful, but when it is instant cast and does 20% increased damage and healing, if you have Echo Reversion on that person, that's another 20% increased damage and healing. It can suddenly become quite a powerful ability. That one just healed for 130k. Um, so it can be actually quite strong. Uh, that was a critical strike for 130k, of course. And the non-crit looks like about 65k, it looks like. Um, but yeah, very, very potent, very, very powerful. Um, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about the playstyle a little bit. Now this is this is where things start to get a little bit challenging. It's definitely the hardest class in the game. Um, do not feel frustrated if you're not getting it at first. It takes a lot of getting used to. It's very 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 different from any healer that you will have played before, in terms of its design, in terms of the way to get the most out of it. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about our um, our general typical rotation. So first and foremost, our first line of defense. It's to be echoing reversions onto our teammates. Echoing reversions uh, does a lot of healing. If someone dips very, very low, you might be tempted to, to want to live and claim them to get them into a safe and healthy range, uh, but that is bad thinking and you don't actually want to do that. We play a talent called Golden Hour. If you're not aware of it and you've just been clicking on the talents that people are telling you to take, this is one that you should take a look at. And what it says is that reversion instantly heals a target for 15% of damage taken in the last five seconds. That might not sound like a lot, but if someone just got dropped to 10% health by a missed kick or something, then we're suddenly talking about a very, very massive nuke heal on them if you cast reversion. Now, think about this. Golden Hour will proc twice when you echo a reversion. Because the first reversion will proc Golden Hour. The second reversion will also proc Golden Hour. Each of them will heal your target for 15% of the damage taken. Doing this, like echoing reversions, you can actually do a ton of healing to, to people. Um, this is effectively our filler spell, not Living Flame. Uh, it's not like other healers. You have to get that out of your head if that is a, is that is a line of thinking that you're taking. Um, so you definitely want to be using Echo Reversion as a, as a healing spell. If someone takes a lot of damage, Echo them, put a Reversion on them. 
It's very, it's that simple. Um, that is our first line of defense. Our second line of defense is to put Adrian Breath on everybody. Uh, now, because of the, because of the Call of Ysera ability, um, which says Verdant Embrace increases the healing of your next Dream Wrath by 40% or your next Living Flame by 100%. Um, whenever we Verdant Embrace, we get a very, very, very powerful Dream Breath. 40% is incredibly significant. This hot is really, really, really big. And it takes for a massive amount if we also have Echo Reversion on the target who is taking it. Um, this is something that you always want to be playing around in times like when damage is happening. You want to make sure that you have Verd and Embrace a target who really needs it. Um, you probably, in most contexts, just want to Verd and Embrace off yourself just to get the buff. And then just get the buff on your party and then go start going into Echo Reversions. Um, but this is also a very, very important thing to have in your toolkit. Um, and of course, you can Echo a Dream Breath as well. Um, you do need to be somewhat discerning about when you send out your Dream Breath because it is a lengthy cooldown. Um, but also don't be afraid to just ship it out um, off cooldown at, at times. Uh, once you get a like, really strong feel for the damage patterns, you'll have a really good idea when you should ship it out. Um, but for the most part, you want to just be sending it off cooldown. Uh, now, the next major ability we need to talk about is Spirit Bloom. Um, Spirit Bloom we're going to want to cast when our entire team is injured. It is a massive AoE uh, new keel. If you are higher health, if you have higher health than everyone on your team, it's effectively going to be a group wide lay on hands. Um, you'll see in practice, like a lot of evokers, like you'll see people dip down really low, and then suddenly their health bars just shoot back up. That is a Spirit Bloom. Um, oftentimes, we'll be pairing Tip the Scales with Spirit Bloom because it just uh, will get our team out of a massively bad situation very, very, very quickly. Um, and yeah, these are effectively our first, second, and third lines of defense. Um, and uh, that's that's kind of um, the basics of what we want to be doing. So we're just to reiterate, we are echoing lots of reversions. We are sending our burden embrace on our most injured party member when we can, of course, making sure that we are safe to fly between ourselves and them. Uh, we are keeping Dream Breath off up on people during times of damage or when damage is about to happen, we will Dream Breath. And we are casting Spirit Bloom um, before a damage event. Uh, you usually want to pre-cast the Spirit Bloom before the damage happens. Otherwise, you, your team might die as you're channeling it, um, especially in some of these high keys. If you're waiting for the damage to happen and then casting the Spirit Bloom, sometimes it's too late. Um, so any kind of planned damage where you know you need like an AoE lay on hands on the whole team, um, you can just make sure that you have an Echo Reversion on yourself, that you're higher health than everybody else, and then you're channeling this, and then boom, damage happens, and boom, you can release, and everybody gets the massive heal. Um, uh, as far as some of let's talk about our weaknesses a little bit before we get into too much of the gameplay footage. Um, uh, so our biggest weakness, of course, is our positioning. Um, your range is shorter than other healers. And let me tell you what, you will feel it. Uh, there are some bosses where you just can't yell at your team enough. Uh, you'll have a warlock who's like out in the middle of nowhere and they, they just don't want to move ever. And they're, they've chosen a really poor position to plant and start dealing damage. Um, and they're just making your life absolutely and utterly hell. So that is definitely the worst uh, case scenario. You need to be highly communicative if you're playing in comms, which hopefully you are. And if you're not playing in comms, like before a uh, party chat, it's it's a, you, before you can always take up the party chat and say, hey, listen, my range is not great. Um, range classes, please play in melee. Uh, for the most part, um, it's pretty safe for range to play in melee. They just need to be mindful um, of what does and does not have a melee mechanic. Um, but like, let's say these are the mobs. Your range can pretty safely be like right here, like almost regardless of anything in this particular season. Um, some of the more dangerous things are uh, definitely called the Valor. There's a lot of frontals. Um, so they can't just be like hard in melee, but as long as they're, you know, within a reasonable range, uh, they should have no problem. Um, of course, like, you know, even being like out here is fine. Just make sure that they're aware of the fact that this is a mechanic that they have to play around. Um, it is uh, not you being stubborn or weird or stingy. Uh, this is just a mechanic of the game. And if they're a good player, then they will need to play around it. Otherwise, they will possibly die. And at the end of the day, you do not want to go out on a limb to and potentially lose your tank, potentially lose other party members, just to try to keep someone alive who is uh, not playing around your range. Uh, if someone's in the middle of nowhere, that's kind of on them. Uh, and you need to keep that in mind. So you can quote me on that for sure. Um, so what have we got next? Yeah, be be communicative. Be be highly highly communicative. Um, so we talked about a little bit about our rotation. Um, we talked a little bit about some of our combos. 
Uh, let's quickly talk about stasis um, before we get into the gameplay footage. Um, stasis is an incredibly high skill cap ability that I think um, a lot of people will struggle with at first. Um, I'll just go ahead and be the first person to say it. You're probably thinking way too hard about it. Um, it's way, way simpler than whatever you're thinking. Uh, basically, you just want to be pressing stasis early and often. Um, a good rule of thumb is that if you're unsure is if you're ever in, if you ever desperately need to cast a spirit bloom and you, and the encounter is going to be going for a little bit, uh, go ahead and just slam your stasis and fire off that spirit bloom. Um, you can pretty much like open every single trash pack with a stasis. If you need a spirit bloom at the beginning of that trash pack and then throughout the course of the pool, you'll just be kind of building up your stasis as you need to like so we've we've done this like we go back to dpsing okay like now this person's injured so i'm gonna burn and embrace them so i'm gonna burn and embrace them boom okay now like i'll just go ahead and close out the stasis because i can get a value out of a dream breath and i just go back to doing my thing i know i have the stasis that's just sitting around don't overthink it if you're ever gonna cast a spirit bloom and the pack is gonna be a lot alive for a long time and you have stasis available just press it it's totally fine uh, there are certain examples of, of times when you don't want to do this. Um, and those times are typically when you know for a fact that you must have this for a specific mechanic or else your team is going to die. Uh, but for the most part, when you're dealing with trash, it's okay to just fire it off. You're not really going to regret it. Um, it's because it's 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 just uh, good to have extra burst healing that is just sitting around um, in case you need it. Um uh, so one major tip, uh, I think a lot of people will be talking about kind of the same combo in stasis, which is that we go burn and brace into dream breath into spirit bloom. And this is definitely the, uh, this is definitely the, um, the most standard combo that you can use. Um, but there's other things you can do with it. Um, definitely get creative. Uh, at the end of the day, the most important thing is that it does have a spirit bloom in it and that it does have a way that guarantees that you are higher health than your teammates when the spirit bloom goes off. Um, so pretty much like anytime I'm going to put a spirit bloom in it, I'll often go stasis, burden embrace myself, so I'm higher health than everybody, into a spirit bloom. And this just guarantees that the mastery, um, that we're going to get full mastery benefit from our, uh, or we're going to get full benefit from our mastery on that spirit bloom. And it is going to be an AOE land hands. It is going to be very, very potent um, when we reactivate that stasis. Uh, that is very important. If you ever fired off a spirit bloom when you were very low and your your team was at like, just a little bit higher, but also very low. Um, it might have been a derpy heal, and you might have felt really bad about it. Um, that's just something to keep in mind with Spirit Bloom in general. Um, that when you're pressing it, um, ideally you're higher health than everybody else. Um, but of course, everything isn't always going to be perfect. Uh, sometimes you're under a lot of pressure, and you just don't have enough globals to do that. Um, so that is pretty much it for stasis. Uh, I do cover a couple of other interesting stasis ramps in another of my videos where I talk about some of the secret combos that people are unaware of. Uh, there are lots of other things that you can do with it. Um, I guess one other interesting thing to note that I've dreamt up since the time of, the, time of that video is that you can actually put into stasis, um, you can echo a lot of reversions, or you can, you can actually go into stasis, and you can go echo on one person, echo on someone else, and echo on somebody else. And you can go reversion. So everybody's got reversions. You've consumed all your echoes. And now we're going to be getting um, four set procs as a result. I think these people have PvP enabled, so I won't uh, be getting four I won't be getting four set procs at the rate that I would if I had reversions on like my full party. Um, but this will give you a lot of uh, four set procs, which increases the amount of damage that you do. Um, and then what you can do, like once these reversions start falling off. It is just press this button again, put echo, 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 and then reversion everybody all over again. And this will just continue the train of getting lots of four set procs, which gives us more damage. Um, it's just a really kind of cheeky way to guarantee that we're getting these procs, that we're doing lots more single target damage than we otherwise would be. Um, and that's just a cheeky little thing if you feel like you're definitely not going to need it for healing in the next bit. Of course, you definitely want to be using it for healing most of the time. Um, but yeah, that is, that is a, another interesting thing that you can consider. Um, so let's see here. Uh, let's talk about some of our, our ramps. Uh, so you might have heard it said that we are a ramp class. Um, we are definitely a ramp class. And I actually have some gameplay footage that I wanted to bring up for this. Uh, I think Advisor Melindris is a really great example of some of the combos that we do and some of the ramps that we will be doing in Mythic Plus. Uh, because we pretty much do everything that we uh, everything that we might in this particular fight. 
Um, so whenever I start this fight, I'll always put echoes on the whole party. Actually playing like really, really safe here. It's like making sure that I got some, uh, some like procs here where I spent these. <clears throat> um, so here comes our first ramp. Cash in all those echoes for reversions. This is going to give us lots of four set procs so I can deal more damage to the boss. Uh, this was a 24 tyrannical, so I was playing, and we were, our time was a little tight, so I was playing very, very careful here. Um, but here's our standard uh, ramp. We're going to go echo, echo, echo. And then when the damage starts, we can go burden embrace. A lot of our a lot of our ramps will kind of function off of this initially. Oops. I believe I put this in slow motion. Let's put this in uh, full motion. So here we'll prep for our next ramp. Um, and this is a really, really uh this is a really powerful ramp. Uh, I would actually I actually use this ramp all the time um for all kinds of different damage events. Everything I do on Melindris is are things that you should have in your playbook and things that you can use for pretty much any given damage event where people are gonna be taking a lot of damage. Um I think Melindris is a great case study for this reason. That's why I brought up this VOD. Um so this is our this is um our most powerful way of using stasis. Oh actually I'm sorry, we're actually not gonna use stasis here. Uh this is one of the most powerful ramps that we can do. Um and this is the Emerald Communion Ramp. And so what we're going to do for our Emerald Communion Ramp, and you will be doing this often, is going Echo, Echo, Echo. The party members in my team who have green frames have Echo applied to them. That's just a way that I like to track it. Um, and then we will Bird Embrace ourselves when the first iteration of damage happens. This will top everybody off. And we will immediately press Emerald Communion. Um, so what this does is we actually have a mechanic in this class called Lifebind. And what Lifebind does is it says when we bond our life, we can bond our life with an ally, causing healing on either partner to heal the other for 40% of the amount. Lasts for five seconds. So the way this works is if you heal someone, you now have Lifebind and they have Lifebind. And so what that means is that any healing that is happening to you is also happening to them. And when I say any healing, I mean any healing. This includes health potions, this includes lock rocks, and this includes our powerful personal ability, which you might not have thought of as an AOE heal until just now, Emerald Communion. Emerald Communion says, commune with the Emerald Dream, restoring 20% of health and mana every 0.8 seconds for 4.2 seconds. Overhealing is transferred to a nearby injured ally. Um, so this is an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly potent self-heal. Um, that just does in oodles and oodles and oodles and oodles of healing. Um, I mean, you can heal through a, an apocalypse using this ability. Um, now when you're giving this to your entire team through Lifeline, it just becomes like that much more broken. It's incredibly, incredibly powerful. Uh, that said, there are some mechanics, uh, where it is, um, a bit of a challenge once you get up into the 24s and sometimes you will want to ask your tank, uh, or if you have a DPS warrior to rally and cry over the top of this ramp, um, just in case it's not enough, um, because it's not necessarily as powerful as our stasis ramp. Um, but just to show you what that looks like, we go echo, 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 take a take of damage, burn embrace ourself, this applies lifeline to everyone, emerald communion, heal everybody. And as you can see, we're very, very safe here. And so we'll start prepping for our next damage event here. I actually got really frustrated. Uh, that's a little, little blunder. This is the classic blunder. Uh, when you're going for a ramp and you've already cast a, uh, living flame or you've already cast a fire breath and you have living flame spec, uh, leaping flame spec, uh, some, it will, of course, if there is not enough damage targets to damage, when you damage an ability, uh, when you damage an enemy, it will instead heal your teammates and that'll eat all your echoes. Be mindful of that. I was kind of frustrated here. Uh, it was a, yeah, that was an incredibly frustrating moment. Let me actually change the uh, scale here so you guys can see this a little bit better. Oh, there we go. So here was our Emerald Communion ramp and we'll move on to our next ramp. Um, So this next ramp is our standard stasis ramp. Um, This is an incredibly powerful powerful uh, ramp that can do just an absolutely crazy amount of healing. And it splits it up into two different chunks. So you have the 
initial bit of healing that goes when you're storing, building the stasis, and you have the initial bit or the the afterwards bit of healing when you are releasing the stasis. Uh, so the way I'll do this ramp is to go echo, echo, echo. And as we can see, slicing maelstrom is about to happen. So we go echo, echo, echo. We echo everyone who is not us. Because uh, we do not need to be included in the echo ramp because we are going to burn embrace ourself and thusly we are still getting the heal. And then the damage event happens, slicing maelstrom. First things first, we're going to pop stasis. We're going to vert embrace ourselves as soon as we take a tick. And let's watch this actually in slow motion. We'll go to uh, 0.5 speed here. So we will vert embrace ourselves. We'll take a tick of damage. We will tip the scales. We're inside of the stasis still. See so us press tip the scales into a spirit bloom to top everyone again. And then we will cast Dream Breath. And that is essentially the, what we want to be doing with our when we open a stasis, and it's a major damage event. Uh, you don't always have to tip the scales inside of a stasis. Uh, just because of how much damage you take during a slicing maelstrom from Melindris, um, I do recommend that you tip the scales in this situation. And also in many situations, like if you have tipped the scales and your party is in trouble, you should just send it because like, what are you waiting for? Like, this is the most, like one the, one of the hardest things I think to learn as a healer is like, you're always thinking to yourself like, well, I need to save this in case something really bad happens. Um, that's a bad line of thinking a lot of times because sometimes this is the bad thing that's happening and you need to use it. Um, and in this case, uh, that is that is what we go for. Um, so I'll show this in full, in a full speed. We will echo, echo, echo. Burn embrace, tip the scale, spirit bloom, dream breath. And it's just enough healing to coast us through. And then, of course, on the next one, we'll be able to just release the stasis. If you want even more healing, uh, you can go echo, echo, echo to make sure everyone has life bind inside of inside of the window when you release it. Echo, 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 burn embrace. Uh, that is what I choose to do here. So slicing maelstrom, burn embrace, and we release stasis. I really love watching Melindris as a case study, uh, just because there are you go through like so so many different um like ways of healing a damage event because there's just so many damage events. You need to have so many plans. Um, and anything that you see me doing here from Advisor Melindris, you can actually take this and apply it to any damage event. Um, even if like it's the only damage event, you could use any given one of these things to heal it. Um, and I think like one of the things that fledgling evokers don't realize is that. The way that this class works is you have lots and lots of ways to do massive burst healing. Um, and if you have the mentality of like, oh, I need to save this, uh, then you're going to fall behind and your team is going to die. Um, there's no problem in sending like any of these cooldowns, tip the scales, for instance, uh, your Emerald Communion ramp. Uh, there's, no pro there's no problem with sending these uh, because you just have so, so many choices. There are so many ways uh, for you to do this just over and over and over again. I think Melin just really like illustrates that because I mean, here we're just healing through damage event after damage event after damage event after damage event. Um, and over the course of a dungeon, um, whenever there's like crazy amounts of healing to be done, just press a button. Um, just press a button. Like you just have to get in the habit of like of pressing those buttons. And if you press too many buttons uh, and it gets you in trouble later, uh, the worst thing that's going to happen is that you're going to learn like, hey, I overcommitted there. And like, this is a place where I can't do that. But when in doubt, go ahead and send it. Stay alive. That's my best advice to you. Um, here we'll see the same thing. This is another of our ramps. We can go echo, echo, echo. Into a verdant embrace. Into a tip the scales. And we tip the scales. Tip the scales, of course, incredibly powerful ability. Uh, the one thing that I will note uh, that is different from Advisor Melindris and like some of the other damage events is on Advisor Melindris, like we're not spending a lot of our essence on um, echoing reversions. We're spending most of our essence on putting life bind on the party. And that's just because these damage events are just so, so incredibly dangerous um, that we are very, very grateful to, um, we're very, very grateful to be able to um, have that life bind roll link. And it also, the, the length of, uh, the length of the slicing maelstrom lines up really well with the life bind window. So it's just a very like potent effect to have. Um, but typically, we will be spending most of our essence on uh, reversions, which is something that we'll talk about here in a little bit. I just wanted to kind of go through some of the combos here. Here we see another damage event, and we can go into a Zephyr. Um, we have Stasis back, so we can go Zephyr plus Burden Embrace plus a just regular old Cast the Spirit Bloom 
into a dream breath. And then on the next one, we'll just we'll just release it. Oh, there is a there is actually one other little little tidbit that I'd like to show you. Let's see if I do it. If we do it here. I believe this is the one. Let's see if, if uh, that is true. Oh, no, we've actually uh, I've already actually already done uh, my health potion. Uh, so one other thing to note, let's see if I can find it in this ability in this video. Is that when you have a lifebind window rolling, um, everybody you've put you've gone echo 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 into burn embrace. If you use a health potion or a lock rock in this window, um, your they will apply to your team as well. Your team will also get that heal. It's not this one. Where do we use it? Must have been this last one. Here we go. So here you'll see me pop a personal. And burn embrace into a health potion. So as you can see, uh, as you can see, we go echo, 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 and you can watch our health health bars tick up the second time. That's literally just a health potion. So we go down, burn embrace, and boom, there's a health potion. Uh, this can be used to great effects, as with the block rocks. It's a nice little trick to have in your playbook, um, and definitely something I encourage you to try. Um, so yeah, that's that's a little bit about the combos. Um. Uh, next, let's talk a little bit about um, burst healing and maintenance. Um, let's see if we can pull up uh, two examples here. Um, I think uh, Ruby Light Pools has some great examples of burst healing and uh, maintenance as well. Give me one second. Here we go. Um, so this first this first poll um is a great example of a place where I do a lot of maintenance healing. Um let's see here. We actually just do like honestly quite a lot of uh DPS in this poll. Um so something you'll see here as we enter this poll is um we we accidentally let a tectonic slam go off. Um, so I won't waste any time. Uh, there's no reason why I need to let my let us stay this low. And I know I'm not using tip the scales. I'll just tip the scales, spirit bloom immediately. Like not even think about it. Just tip the scales, spirit bloom, boom. Um, when I did this, I actually opened a stasis uh, to make sure that I store that um that spirit bloom in the stasis. Uh, this uh, the visual is bugged. I believe I do have the spirit bloom inside there. Um, or maybe 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 this was a misplay. Uh, I should have definitely opened up opened up the stasis. Um. Let's see here. We actually, there's actually not a lot of healing to be done here, just as a result of how clean we executed this pull on this play. Let's go to, let's go to the knock it offensive guide. I think the knock it offensive guide might be a little better. Well, actually, you know what? We'll just go to Melodrusa. There's a good example. Um, here we go. Um, Melodrusa is a great example of a uh, of burst healing versus uh, maintenance healing. Um, so these heal bombs, uh, I consider this damage event to be something that's more of like maintenance. Um, on this damage event, uh, you're not necessarily, it's not necessarily like imperative that you top people immediately. You have a little bit of time. Um, so I'm like angling more towards maintenance spells. As you can see, we take that initial blast and I've gone ahead and like pre-echoed the entire party. I'm going to quickly just go ahead and oh, cash in all those echoes for reversions, put another reversion out. Uh, my living flame. A few times, let the reversions do their work. Um, so now I'm gonna get out for this, and this is like where we will typically do a lot of our burst healing. Um, so I'm a little bit scared um, for my team here. Uh, they actually did just nerf the heal bombs, and this was like my first time doing it after the nerf. Um, and so I wanted my team to be 100% uh, topped off before this exploded. Um, the damage is actually greatly reduced, uh, so it's it's less imperative that people are at 100% health, but uh, it's still a good good habit to be in. Um, but this fight is like basically just a lot of maintenance healing. Um, you're playing a long game against this boss, right? And so uh, we're just kind of like echoing lots of reversions. We're keeping lots of hots out. We're being as efficient as we possibly can. Um, this is a tactic that we will also employ a lot um, in various trash packs. Uh, for instance, the knock it offensive uh, first first uh, trash pack. Um, on this particular trash pack, uh, there's a lot of single target damage. And we're kind of treating the single target damage um, in the way that we treat um, like a lot of rot damage. Um, we're like using our, we're using first our maintenance spells and then as things get more dire, we start using some more of our emergency heals. Um, I actually really, really like this particular trash pack, uh, because it, I think it illustrates like a lot of, um, 
a lot of evoker's strengths. Uh, I also think that this is a trash pack where a lot of people say that evoker doesn't have very good single target healing. Um, I'm the only ranged here, and so I'm getting targeted by a lot, a lot of mechanics, um, and I don't die. Uh, and that is because we actually do have really good single target healing. Um, it's just a matter of knowing how to get it. Um, let's take a look at here. This is a really great exercise also in um, emergency healing. So as you can see, I've just taken a double take of the bleed. First things first, I'm going to go for a echo reversion. And next thing, I'm going to go into a stasis because I recognize like, hey, in this situation, I'm about to press like three really, really big buttons. So I should go into a stasis. I talked earlier a little bit about how you should always never be afraid of like pressing your stasis button. Um, just go into it when in doubt. Um, I recognize here like I'm in danger and my team is like possibly going to be in danger. I'm casting a Vert Embrace and then I'm going to cast a Dream Breath off the back of that. That's already two great spells I have in my stasis. Uh, so I'm just going to press my stasis and I'm going to Vert Embrace myself to top myself. Follow it up with a Dream Breath. And then um, once I'm more stationary, I'll take a little bit of damage. And I will go for a Spirit Bloom. Uh, so now we have a huge stasis that's lined up. If there, we take any more bursts of damage, um, we're going to be totally cool. And we take some ticks. Um, I'm no stranger. To, I'm no stranger to just get doing the burst healing. I just immediately release the stasis. Um, so just to show you what that looked like. Um, I've just filled the stasis. I take a bunch of damage. I'm afraid of dying. I'm just going to release it. There's no point in risking it. I just let go of it. And now we go into our second line of defense. Um, I still have bleeds on me and I know that I'm going to be taking more damage. I just go ahead and I time dilation myself. And as you can see, like doing this, I was able to do a lot, a lot of single target burst healing. And I already have those powerful spells like right back up again. Uh, so this nest trash, trash pack is um, very maintenance oriented. Um, we're kind of being like really efficient. Like the shaman dips really low here. I charge up a full uh, I charge up a full fire breath um, and allow the fire breath to top the shaman. Our fire breath, of course, um, will heal um, one of our party members based on the an empowerment level when we uh, release it. So I allow that to top them off. I'm echoing lots of reversions. I'm making sure that everyone is uh, prepared to in case they take lots of damage. And yeah, just lots and lots of maintenance spells here. And as you can see, uh, that's that's kind of just my uh, kind of like what I'm going for. Just echoing more and more reversions. I send out a four step proc for healing. And this is kind of the basic flow of the class. You just sort of do this um, over and over on repeat. Echo reversions. Oh, uh, you should also like if, too, if someone already has an echo reversion on them, you don't have to be afraid. You can go ahead and echo reversion them again. The echo reversions are also going to get boosted by uh, these two. So if someone has echo, an echo it has a reversion and an echo reversion on them, and then you echo reversion them, uh, the golden hour is just going to scale insane. It's going to do so, so much healing. Um, playing this way, you can very easily run out of essence um, and run out of reversion charges, of course, uh, but I find that you generally have just enough to get the job done and your other abilities kind of uh, fill in the gaps. Hopefully, as you watch this, um, you're getting a better and better idea of sort of like how you're like, you know, pack to pack, like how you should be healing trash. Um, cause you kind of just do the same thing over and over. And here we have in a war spear. So we'll be taking more bleeds. We have a fixate mob. And so, yeah, same thing. Just looking to echo lots of reversions. Sometimes I'll, if I'm capping on essence, I'll just go ahead and spend it so that I can use it later. Don't necessarily need to use it immediately. Burn Embrace myself. Um, again, like we have stasis available. I know I'm gonna cast a Burn Embrace off the back of a Burn Embrace. I want to cast a Spirit or a, a, I want to cast a Dream Breath. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. And I know that I'm probably gonna be taking even more damage because this War Spirit is enraged and I have a bleed on me. Um, so I start charging up the Spirit Bloom and boom, we have a full stasis for the next pack for as soon as we take burst damage. And the flow just kind of goes like this. Um, I think that's this this trash is like a really good example of um. Kind of some of our uh, our strengths and weaknesses, um, or more and more so our strengths, because uh, I don't really think that we have too many weaknesses. Uh, you can't eventually run out of things to press. Um, uh, but if you're being very, very discerning and you look back on the footage of like what you were doing when you ran out of things to press, uh, chances are you made a gameplay error and you could have corrected it. The glass is infinitely deep, and there's always something more that you can be doing. Um, so yeah, uh, let's. With that said, we talked a little bit about emergency healing, burst healing, and maintenance. 
Um, I spoke about how I don't think that you should hold CDs. You should really just send them. Um, send stasis early. Send it often. Um, let's talk a little bit about tank healing. Um, and I believe somewhere in this knock and offensive, our tank will actually be getting plastered. Here we go. Uh, so this trash is definitely a place where your tank is going to be in a lot of trouble. Um, and I recommend doing a couple of things. Um, I talk a lot, a little bit about this in the knock it offensive guide, which is, um, in its entirety on, um, uh, my YouTube as well. And, uh, basically our tank healing rotation is, is fairly straightforward. We're going to echo reversions and we're going to echo, echo, uh, dream breaths. So if your tank is taking a lot of damage, um, you can rotate a couple of different things. Um, and I don't know if we'll see it happening here per se. Um, here we go. Here's a good example. Uh, my tank happens to be very tanky. He doesn't take a lot of damage. Um, or he doesn't need a lot of uh, externals a whole lot. So he's playing a blood decay. So a lot of times I'm pretty uh, blessed in that regard. Um, but there's a couple things you can do um, when your tank is uh, taking an absolute beating. And that is to echo reversions and then echo a dream breath. And so I think we'll see me do that here. Um, so I would recommend doing two things. First of all, you have your stagger ability. You can give your tank the stagger ability when they're really, really dying um, and keep echo reversion on them. And then when the stagger falls off or when it's about to fall off, as I did here, you can go ahead and go echo reversion into echo a dream breath. And make sure, of course, that you burn embrace somewhere in between, usually your tank, uh, so that the, the dream breath is boosted. And now the tank will just have a lot, a lot, a lot of, of hots on them. This is a lot of healing. Both of these dream breaths are being boosted by grace period because we have two, we have two, um, uh, reversions on our tank and it's just it's just so 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 much healing i can't say it enough like this is nobody's gonna die if they have all four hots on them this is like the exodia of hots so to speak um it's very very powerful um and that's pretty much all there is to it as far as tank healing goes try to decouple your dream breath if if your team is going to be okay and your tank is the only one who needs who needs assistance uh use it as a defensive on the tank by echoing a dream breath onto them always have echo reversion on them and uh, try to desync time dilation from dream breath because both of these are very powerful effects, especially an echo dream breath. And your tank should be fine with either or. Uh, putting both on at the same time will create a gap where you have where you don't have either on your tank. And uh, yeah, that's that's uh, pretty much it for uh, tank healing. Um, I think if I were going to show any other thing, it might be a uh, it might be a little bit to talk a little bit about um, some defensive usage. Uh, let's see here. We actually did twenty five. Elfgar Academy, we died. And a 24, and we also died um uh yesterday, I believe that was. Let's see if we can uh find I wanted to show you um some of the interesting uh some of the interesting things that you can do. All right, well, here's the 23. Um And let's go to the bird boss. This is a great uh, example of um how to do, how do you, let's talk about defensive usage. This, this is definitely an important topic. Um, so one of the most important things that you can be doing as a player in Mythic Plus um, is managing your defensives. Uh, the difference between a great player and um, a good player, or a good player and a great player, is that the, the great player will never die, and they will never die because they're managing their defensives incredibly well. Um, you can be good at the game and um, still just be. I just, I just can't stress it enough. You really, really, really need to be good at using your defensives. And a lot of times this comes with having proper planning. Um, use obsidian scales often, uh, but always use it at the correct time. Um, so on this particular boss, you get a stacking debuff. And that stacking debuff effectively causes the scree deafening screech to do more and more and more damage. Um, so as it ramps up, you eventually need to use defensives or you will literally die. And so there are a couple of things that you can do here. Uh, the first one's usually free um, in this particular example. Um, and the second one is when things start to hurt. Um, so you have a lot of different defensives. And let's talk about those really quickly, uh, what those are, and before we get too deep into using them. Uh, the first one is, of course, Obsidian Scales. Uh, we talked about this earlier. You can reinforce your scales, reducing damage taken by 30% for 12 seconds. Um, this is really big for massive hits that will kill you. It's really big for damage events that last for a while that you just want to take less damage from. Um, Next, we have Renewing Blaze. Uh, this will do nothing to save you from a one-shot, uh, but it will be very, very potent and an ability against an ability like Herja Storm. And you will also have it for every single storm. Um, if you 
uh, spec appropriately into Fire Within. Or I'm sorry, the, the Elemental Storm, you'll have it for every single one. You won't have it for every single Herja Storm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then we also have Twin Guardian. Uh, Twin Guardian is actually one of the one of the uh, lesser played abilities, um, but I've actually have come around to the idea of it because it's incredibly powerful. Um, so if there's a one shot mechanic, you can actually uh, do your little life grip ability. You can rescue um, one of your teammates and it will give you both a nice potent absorb shield. It'll give you, in fact, a 110k absorb shield on each of you. Um, so that's really, really powerful. Um, it's uh, going to definitely save your life from, from being one shot in a lot of context. Um, so definitely consider this if you're going into a key that has a lot of one shot mechanics. Um, Tyr and Maruk comes to mind. And of course, the, the bird boss comes to mind. Um, so what we'll see here is we take the first uh, Screech, totally fine. It's not going to kill us. And from that point forward, we have a plan for every single one. The next Screech is coming out. So I grip my teammates, uh, kind of troll. I almost grip them into the uh, static thing. You can actually, if you can see my face, I'm like, oh, I'm like really freaked out because uh, it was just really bad timing with Thundering. Uh, so we grip. We each have a an Absorb Shield which you can see right here if you look at my buffs. And we are going to uh, be very, very healthy coming out of that. Uh, next, we'll get another Screech. And we can go forward to that one. And for this Screech, um, I know that I am probably safe with a Rally and a Zephyr. So we Rally and Zephyr. And we all live. Zephyr is, of course, another way to prevent your full team from being one shot by specifically an AoE ability. And then for the next one, we can Obsidian Scales. I actually choose to time dilation myself here as well because I'm not entirely sure. Like, am I actually covered by just just the Obsidian Scales? I'm not sure. I've not not taken a a four stack um, without a rally before, and we did not have a rally, uh, so it was the first time seeing it, and I was a little scared. Um, but yeah, we did we did all make it through. It looks like I probably would have lived um, with just the scales. Um, this is a great example of a boss where we can talk about defensives. Um, but also, uh, you need to be using your defensives for a lot of other things. Um, anytime, for instance, in a Ruby Life Bulls, when you get the bomb set in the trash, I mean, there's almost never a bad time in Ruby Life Bulls to press a defensive. If you just press that button, you're going to get good value because this dungeon, I mean, oh my god, it hurts. I'm sure you are well aware. Um, but a great place for an obsidian scales and ruby life pools is, of course, when you get a living bomb. Let's see if we get one on me. Uh, you could also be using your time dilation on someone else who gets the, the living bomb if they don't have a defensive available. Boop. And here we're going to get a living bomb. And so what you'll see me do is I'll immediately pop obsidian scales. And I'll quickly echo myself, the bomb goes off, and I go ahead and reversion myself. And it's it's, fairly, it's really that simple. If you're ever going to take like a big hit of damage and you know it's coming, uh, you can just scales and then take the hit and you will be uh, much better off. Um, I think that uh, one of the most important things that you can be doing, especially as a player who is new to doing very, very high keys or new to keys in general, is practicing always using your defensives. It is very, very critical. Even if you don't necessarily need them in the lower keys, if you want to become a better player and you want to be doing the higher keys, uh, you need to get really, really good at them. Again, that is the most critical thing that you could possibly be doing um, as a player, regardless of what role you're playing. Um, and as a dragon, you are actually quite squishy um, without your defensives. So using them properly is really, really important. And yeah, with that said, um. I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this uh, particular build. Um, uh, there's like other little tips I could give you. Um, you know, make sure that your health is higher than everyone else is in times of high damage to proc your mastery. Um, uh, but, you know, a lot of it just comes from experience. Um, the more guides you watch, the more time you spend playing, the more streamers you watch, uh, uh, the better you're going to get at the class. Um, and I will continue making more and more and more videos. Um, a lot of times just watching other people play, listening to what they have to say. Uh, will inform your own ideas. Um, before anything else, uh, you should definitely be trying to be creative because it's a brand new class and everyone has not mastered it yet. I have not mastered it yet. Uh, literally no one has. We're all still kind of figuring this out um, step by step. And uh, we're learning this together as a community. Um, I think the best ways to play this class, the most effective strategies have yet to be uncovered. 
Um, and I'm excited to be one of the people who's at the forefront of uh, kind of looking into that. Um, I'm glad that you guys also choose to come to this channel and to listen to me and to hear all the silly things that I have to say. Um, if you're still sticking around, uh, that means that you are probably pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Uh, cause it's actually a really long video. I just realized I just looked down I'm like, oh my God, this is an hour. Um, but yeah, let me go over to my hanging out screen. Hey everybody. Um, yeah, if you are, if you're still sticking around, uh, you're a real one and I'm really grateful for that. I hope that you will, um, come by my Twitch. Uh, I'm probably streaming right now at twitch.tv slash eyelash TV. Um, I stream seven days a week, uh, just about sometimes six, mostly seven. And, um, yeah, as I said, I'm probably streaming right now. Um, please, please, please be sure to click the, click the subscribe button. Uh, be sure to follow, be sure to like the video and comment on the video. Did I miss anything important? Is there anything that you want to hear about? Um, would you like me to make a specific guide for a particular boss? Um, I would love to. And, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I just actually broke a major benchmark. We have, I think now 1200 or maybe even more, um, subscribers at this point. So we went through the 1000, like really, really quickly. Um, and we have almost our full 4,000 viewed hours. Um, so the channel is growing really, really rapidly. And that's thanks a lot to you guys. Uh, my Twitch has also been growing really, really rapidly. Um, and I couldn't do that without y'all. Um, I really appreciate that. You guys are truly making my dreams come true every single day, um, one step at a time. Um, with that said, I love you guys and I will see you in the next video. Until then, uh, I don't have a catchphrase, but if I did, this is where I'd say it.